Good morning business students, this is week two of a five week programme. So last week we were looking at functional areas, um, this week we're going to be looking at the recruitment cycle. So as we go through the five weeks we'll be building up our knowledge on the human resource, resources department or the human or the human resources element within, um, within a business. So just a little starter activity just to test your knowledge from last week on functional areas, it's 12 marks. You need to describe for me for the first question the five main functional areas. So when I'm asking you about describing, it's really using a few words, just tell me what those different functions um, do. Then you need to list, just in bullet points, three um, tasks that take place within the human resources department. So what do they actually do? And then the last one, so for the third question, is explain two consequences of functional areas not working together for four marks. Probably take you about between five and ten minutes to do this. Okay, so for 12 marks, for the first question is going to be five marks. So all you needed to basically tell me was what did finance do, HR, marketing, operations or production and admin and IT. So for finance, it really is looking at budgeting and money. It's to do with the money, the flow of money, within the organisation. HR is all about recruitment and selection, it's the people element within the organisation. Marketing is looking at uh, the sales and the development of the product and the service. Operations and production is looking at producing the good or buying in the good and then getting it out to the customers. And then admin and IT are those support elements which look at um, meeting and greeting clients, looking at reception, answering the phone, IT is about the hardware, software and security of the organisation's uh, function in terms of, actually it goes across all the functions, so IT is with every single one, so it's the software that they use, uh, the hardware that they use to the computers, make sure that the network is saved so you can store and you can retrieve the information. Okay, three tasks that are taking place in the human resources department, there's actually loads, but the ones that I just picked out was recruitment and selection, looking at different training elements, and also motivation of employees. And then the last one is looking at your consequences. When you get an explained question in an exam, it can be four marks or six marks. Four marks generally, you need to make two points. Sometimes you have a six mark question and you'll only be, ha be able to do one point, but you've got to explain with more detail. But as we go through the course, Obviously, year 10 going into year 11, you know how to answer that question. But for those new new going into business, we'll explain that when we get into the classroom a little bit further. But So for this instance, it's two marks for each point. You're going to say what the consequence, consequence is and why it's important or what the consequences and why actually, you know, the issues that happen to the business. So things of lack of coordination. So that's what the consequence is. So employees don't actually understand what, what's required of them. Um, tasks aren't are maybe not explained properly or somebody doesn't tell somebody what to do or when they've got to do it um, or how they've got to do it so they don't know what we're doing and then the issue of that is that things don't get done or don't get done properly or don't get done on time. Lack of coordination, tasks don't get completed or when they are required to be done or they're not done at the same time or, or the departments aren't working when they should be working together, not getting the information. And then that can lead to problems as well. So you've got to make sure that you've got two parts to your answer. Okay, tot up your marks. It's out of twelve marks. If you've got four marks, fabulous, brilliant, great knowledge from last week. If you've got, you haven't got twelve marks, then you need to look at the areas that you need to improve on. Okay, so this week we're going to be looking at recruitment and selection. It's quite there's quite a lot of information on recruitment and selection, but really the examiners are just wanting you to understand. What is the recruitment process? You know, how does it work? Why is it important? And the basics of it. So you need to understand why businesses need to recruit. You also need to understand the positives or the benefits and drawbacks of looking at internal and external recruitment. And also you've got to be able to put all that knowledge into place and in context so the examiner knows that you have one good knowledge of that particular area but once you've got that knowledge you can then apply it to a particular business or little scenarios okay so what are the possible reasons why a vacancy occurs i would like you to jot down i would say 10 reasons why a vacancy occurs please so think of why a business might need to recruit people 
Okay, so you should have, I would say probably at least five. I'd like you to try and get 10 if you could. Tick off the ones that you've got if you've got them right. If you've not got them, add them to your list of notes. So you've got employees that leave for a new job. You've got expansion of the business, long-term sickness or illness, people retiring, uh, people going on maternity or paternity leave. Maternity is when a lady goes off, a female goes off. Paternity is when a male goes off and looks after the family because you can act, the laws change now that actually it doesn't matter which partner goes off. Um, by law, if a lady goes off, a woman goes off, female goes off to have a baby, they have to be off work for two weeks. After two weeks of the birth of the baby, they can come back straight to work um, and, then, and then a male or somebody else can look after their baby. It's entirely up to them who does it. Um, somebody might get promoted so therefore there's a vacancy then uh, people might relocate they go and work somewhere else so therefore you need to hire other people somebody might have been fired or made redundant and also the last one is death unfortunately yes that does happen it occurs and then we've got vacancies to fill okay so you need to write this down please because it's a key term so what is recruitment what is selection so recruitment is the process of identifying a vacancy and actively seeking somebody to fill it selection is looking at the process to choose the suitable candidate so take a couple of minutes write those key terms okay so you've written down the key terms what you need to do now is you need to put this uh, website into the into your search engine and it will come up with BBC Bite Size and it looks at reasons why um, or kind of the reasons that people are employed. So, you know, what is it that the employees look for um, when they're recruiting? So write down some notes. It will take about two and a half minutes, I think the video is, and then we'll come back. So a couple of minutes, write some notes, look at the specific qualities that people look for when they're employing other people. Okay, so you've looked at the, the video, you've seen the kind of specific qualities, so make sure people are honest, make people sure that they've got knowledge, they've got understanding, they're trustworthy, all those type of qualities um, are looking. people are looking at when they want to employ you. Um, looking at the importance of recruiting the right people, it's really important, not only do you actually recruit the right people, but also you keep them, okay? You need to make sure that people have got the skills to do the job, and actually they want, they are willing to work hard, so they're not just coming to work to actually earn some money, we all do, but they are willing to do the job properly. If you get the wrong people, then you could actually lose customers because the people aren't doing their job properly, they get poor customer service, and that's gonna have an impact on your sales. Retention, so that means that very few people leave over a period of time, which is really good for the business because people have got knowledge, they understand how the business works, and actually it reduces your cost for recruitment and selection. And also, um, if you've got high retention rates, then it's much easier to recruit because people want to come and work for you. They'll say, actually, nobody's leaving or very few people leave. It must be a really good place to work. So can you just write down those four points for me? Okay, when we look at recruiting people, we can do it internally and externally. Okay, so we need to think about what are the kind of methods that we can use internally in the organisation. So you've got a job vacancy and actually you just want to look at maybe advertising it internally first. So the way in which you can do that is things like notice boards, you can do it on plasma screens, you can do it on email, you can do it through newsletters, um, word of mouth, departmental meetings. So make sure you write some of those methods down and also external, so think about, so externally means going outside of the business to try and employ people. So that might be looking at job centres, it might be recruitment agencies if you've not got an in-house um, HR department. It might be that you look at advertising nationally, locally in newspapers, you will do it online um, on your website. So there's quite a lot of areas in which you can choose from in terms of external and internal recruitment what you need to do now is you need to draw uh, do a little uh, little box do it into four you've got internal and external you've got benefits and drawbacks and you need to think about the good things and bad things about just looking internally or advertising or getting people from inside the business to fill a vacancy and then look at the benefits and drawbacks of 
external so going outside of the business and getting new people in okay so let's just have a look at the reasons why you would want to be looking at internal external recruitment and obviously the drawbacks as well if you've got them that's great tick it off if you've not please write down the bullet points okay so internal benefits people already know the business it's quick to do and it's relatively cheap because all you're doing really is possibly taking up a little bit of time meeting time and interviewing people so actually really fairly straightforward quick cheap and easy also it can motivate staff because if people see that people are getting promoted they might work harder thinking that they can get promoted as well externally you get fresh ideas from new people people might have different experiences and bring that into the business and potentially lots more people to choose from drawbacks internally though you might need to train them there's going to be a limited number of people that can do that particular job it will create another vacancy somewhere else if they move to a different area and also it might cause a little bit of resentment for those people that get interviewed and then don't get the job externally much longer process it takes quite a lot of time to hire people and it costs a lot more in terms of advertising and the interview process okay so what you need to do now is you've got four little scenarios and you've got to look at how would you uh, decide to recruit those people would you do it internally or would you do it externally and why would you do that so it's what would what would you do and why would you do it so you've got a small business that is seeking to recruit an IT expert you've got a major retailer who wants to appoint someone to supervise the sellers sales assistants in a large store you've got a business with very very limited funds so they haven't got a huge amount of budget and they want to appoint a junior employee so somebody kind of lower down the ranks maybe a trainee and then number four is a rapidly growing business that needs a manager for a factory looking at new product development and producing a new product so think about how you would do it and you've got to explain why okay we need to go on to the recruitment process now now some of you have done this already there are 10 stages and what i would like you to do is you may want to print this page off or you might want to write these down once you've done that you need to put them into the correct process so what comes first what comes next until you get right to the end of the process it's got 10 different stages so either print this off or draw it out is entirely up to you but i'm going to pause it a moment you need to fill it in have a good guess some of you might know this some of you think oh i can't remember any of this others may never have seen it before so it'll probably take you about five minutes or so to do okay so the recruitment process goes following you've got a vacancy that you identify you then have a job description you then go on to write in a person's specification and with that information you then look at creating a job advert you then will have people applying for the job and then once you have all your applications for the job you will then shortlist you're looking at the candidates that are most suitable for your particular vacancy you will then arrange and plan your interviews you will then carry out the interviews you will ask for references to check what your candidate has said is true backing up the kind of information that they've given you and then you would go to a job offer if you haven't got this the correct way you need to write this in the correct order tick off the ones that you've got right add in the ones that you maybe not okay so the main areas we've looked at vacancy you now need to know the difference between a job description and a person specification so a job description is looking at is a document that sets out the duties and tasks and a person specification is the document that looks at the qualifications and the kind of skills the kind of person that you actually want so the job description is the kind of tasks and duties the person spec is about the person that you want to employ and how they would fit in with the organization you need to write these two key words down please because i will be looking at testing you next week on it checking your knowledge now you've written those down we need to have a little bit of a kind of like a little bit of a quiz you need to work out which ones are job description and which ones are the person specification you can either highlight it or tick it or write um job description or person spec or whatever you want to do i don't mind how you do it but you've got to make sure that you highlight from a to p which document it contains it's the job description or it's the person specification again you can print it off 
or you can write it out or you can print screen it and kind of highlight it. It's entirely up to you. But I'll give you five minutes to do this. OK, so a little bit cruel. I didn't give you an equal amount. Uh, so you will find that you think you might have had two or three. You thought, oh, I'm not really sure where they go. This is what it should look like. It is out of 12. Give yourself a little tick for the ones that you've got and maybe correct the ones that you've not quite got correct and then give yourself a score out of 12. OK, so moving on to selection methods. So the way in which we select people is by either interviewing them, by doing psychometric testing or assessment centres. Now, interviews is probably the most common one where you basically ask candidates to come in you would give them a series of questions which should give you the information that you require to say yes or no they are going to be a suitable candidate interviews can be one-to-one -one, they can be over the phone they can be at the moment most definitely will be on some kind of like zoom or teams sometimes you do you have panel interviews where you've got maybe three or four or even five people from the organization asking the candidate questions sometimes you will have group activities to do so there's different types of interviews that you can have psychometric testing is normally done online where it's multiple choice questions to kind of tease out the personality of the person try and find out what the candidate is like and will they fit in with the business assessment centers is where you kind of do kind of like role plays and you do psychometric tests as well and some interviews and some practice practice tasks so assessment centers tend to be kind of like a day or two days to do write those key words down please okay so looking at now moving on to interviews you need to be looking at the youtube clip it will probably take five minutes or so to do it and then a couple of minutes to be looking at writing the good things and bad things about these particular interviews so what should you do what shouldn't you do? You know, the things are going to be like getting there on time, being organised, having questions ready, looking smart, making sure you've got references, don't have your phone on, don't be late, don't be too informal with them. Though They are not your friend, you are trying to get a job from them, okay? So make sure you've got some good and bad things written down. And then kind of getting on to the last little bit is just so you've got a bit of information about the types of contracts that you can get. Every employee should have a contract from their employer and within 30 days of being hired, they should have a contract of employment. It sets out the working hours that you have, how much you're going to get paid, the holidays you're entitled to, the duties that you have to perform at work and where you are going to be working. We can have full-time contracts, we can have part-time contracts, and also there are zero hour contracts and seasonal as well. You need to go and find out what zero hour contracts and seasonal are and I'll ask you next week. But what I'd also like you to do is looking at the good things about having a full time and part time workers. OK, so full time and part time workers are as follows. So, you know, fewer staff in total will be needed because they're going to be there all the time. Recruitment and training are its lower lower costs in terms of because you're only going to employ uh, so many people you've not got 20 people you're only gonna to have to do it for maybe 10 people it's easier to manage your control because you know how many people you've got it's fewer staff there people might feel more secure because they uh, know they're going to get obviously a higher salary more benefits and also um some people um kind of they they kind of think that maybe part-time workers um don't necessarily or shouldn't get necessarily the same benefits they feel that they, they're only in for a few hours maybe they should do different tasks to another employee um part-time workers obviously it's cheaper it can be a little bit more flexible um sometimes they just work key hours which are the busiest times and some people actually prefer to work part-time because it really kind of mix in with their worth work-life balance write some of those uh, points down please you need to have at least two or three okay Okay, last few minutes of the lesson, you need to be looking at kind of like plenary questions. So this is just double check that you've understood what we've gone through today. And if you've not, what you need to do is you need to replay the video, you need to go back through the areas and look through the five these five questions. You need to have known these. You've got your fact book as well, which your fact book should give you pretty much everything that you need to know. You know, you need to understand what the term recruitment is, so it's a basic definition. You need to state two circumstances that businesses might need to recruit so why does a vacancy occur 
two pieces of information that might be on a job advert so think about you know what will be included in a job advert it's fairly straightforward in terms of the information in fact actually less is more really make it simple advantage and disadvantage of using interviews as a, a method of selection so the good things about interviewing people and look at the benefits that a business might receive from operating an effective recruitment and selective process. So, you know, what are the good things about going through this whole process of recruitment and selection? OK, what I will do is I will give you the answers to these questions at the beginning of next lesson to make sure that you um, have got um, time to look at this, reflect on it, make sure you understand it. And then when I come back next week, I'll make sure that I've got the answers for you so you can kind of sit there and you can mark it and we can see where you've gone wrong or actually maybe where you've kind of got everything right. OK, take care um, make sure you stay safe um, and I'll get back in contact with you next week. Any problems, obviously just email me, uh, get in contact and I will hopefully be able to answer questions and send through information that you need. Take care. Goodbye.